Hello and welcome to another episode of The Games of Foot, where I sit and play Sherlock Holmes video games and talk about game theory and Sherlock Holmes uh, studies and the like. Um, so uh, this episode is going to be a start off with a bit of an embarrassment for me. Um, those of you who uh, weren't intending the last episode, I got stuck in the middle of the game. I wasn't able to progress. I had people in the chat telling me what to do next. I couldn't get the game to recognize what to do next. And uh, turns out that I just screwed up. I just flat out did something wrong. Um, so I'm going to show you what was going on here, and then we can kind of talk a bit more about that from a design perspective. So let's uh, load up ye old scum here. Um, so what happened last time was, uh, I needed to talk to this gentleman here named James. Uh, he's a rugby player who, um, the case so far, he was a, uh, courting uh, a woman who was actually murdered and is the murder suspect that we're on the case for. Um, and during the conversation I had with him, he said, I need some other evidence. I need some other proof that she's dead. And um, I, I went to the um, morgue. There was nothing there. I went to the police station. There was nothing there. I went to, and we looked through hints and walkthroughs. And said, like, oh, you took a newspaper. We couldn't get that to work. Everything I tried, I couldn't get that to work. And what happened was I didn't ask him enough what's going on here. Uh, so let me kind of show you what I mean. Um, you'll see that there is a yellow... Uh, indicator here and it, as we learned from previous episodes of this game um yellow means that we haven't talked to him yet this wasn't there last time i talked to him and the response we, we talked to him three different times you know it's like i broke it to him gently i was nice to him i was blunt with him and all the time it's like i don't believe it, i don't believe it I, I need some proof so the game seemed to indicate that uh it, you know it needed something but i didn't realize that I had to keep talking to him to get the game to recognize. So, so it was a misleading prompt. Um, and this is something that is actually a pretty big problem in video game writing. Um, it's, it's, a lot, it's not as bad now, but in earlier game designs, um, there's something that would be very some flavorful and interesting, but it turns out actually it, it, it gives the player the impression of, of something incorrect. It look for something in the wrong place or what have you. Um, so now that I have sorted that out, we go through in the proper sequence. I, I, I've only played just to confirm if this is in fact what unlocks it. I'm not playing any further than that. So, so like I only know like the first like two minutes of what's about to happen. Come on, there you go. We're working with Scotland Yard investigating Sarah's death. You must believe that so you can help us find her murderer. I don't believe you. Why should I? You've only done me harm. Sarah's not dead. She can't be dead. You can't convince me that she is. It happened early yesterday, Mr. Sanders. I'm sorry. Perhaps if I had proof, an official death certificate, or, but no, I saw her two days ago. I don't know what your game is, but I want you out of here now. And then it pushes me out. So uh, if it had done that, hey, I need this, and then kick me out earlier, we wouldn't be in this situation here. So minor point. And something else I do want to talk about um, is uh, uh, over the past few episodes, definitely I've, I've been grumbling a bit about bases here and there. Um, I, I want to reiterate that um, this game was written in 1992. It is nearly 30 years old at this point in time. So a lot of what we're talking about is just minor points where it hasn't aged well or we have learned from game design since then. Um, to be super clear, I, I'm not at all... This is still a fantastic game. It is actually quite good. It's a lot better than... I recall this certainly lived up to the hype that people have told me about playing the game, so I'm definitely enjoying it. It's just a frustrating, and also I'm sometimes not good at adventure games. Aha, see, new thing. I would like to look at Sarah Carraway's death certificate. Is it available? Yes, Mr. Holmes. I just finished filling it out. It's there on the body. Why would you? May I take it or a copy of it with me? Certainly not, Mr. Holmes. This is an official document to which the seal of the City of London has been affixed. As for a copy, that would be highly irregular. I don't believe I could sign such a document in my official capacity. In any case, there is no government copyist employed here. Yeah, this is long before photocopiers, so someone else would have actually have transcribed that document. So, death certificate. Death certificate for Sarah Carraway, signed and sealed by the medical examiner. 
And you'll notice if you try to pick it up. This is an official document which is seal of the city of London has been affixed. I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes, but I cannot allow you to take it. Um, you know, Dan, yeah, and Tier Dan Chat pointed out it's possible to point out flaws in something while thoroughly enjoying it. And it's true. I mean, there's a, a tendency in, I think, modern culture and modern criticism of going, oh, I'm going to point out flaws in something and therefore it's bad. Um, in much the same way that I, I could talk about how much I love something and it doesn't make it objectively good. Like the Transformers cartoon, it's, it's not. <laughs> the original 80s cartoon has a lot of flaws. I'm rewatching it right now and it's like, I love it to death, but boy, howdy, it has some problems. Um, okay, so we, I know for a fact nothing is happening in Scotland Yard here, so I'm going to skip that bit. Oops, that's the wrong place. I don't think I wanted to go there. I wanted to do it be Baker Street. Oh, no. Uh, Ian points out, you love insist a ton of problems. Yeah, I mean, literally, the game's been patched for, you wouldn't know better than I would, 15 years now. And people still love it uh, because of its flaws, in spite of its flaws, a little bit of both, maybe. Um, the fact that people like Ian are still patching bloodlines to this day shows that there's, you know, the... the, the I know the phrase uh, flawed gem is kind of used a lot, but in this case, it's really, really true, especially bloodlines. All right, come on, Jonas. Give me something good. Jonas, I need a back issue of the Times, yesterday's early edition. It was the one which named the young woman who was murdered behind the Regency Theater. My apologies, Mr. Holmes. Some of the editions sold out completely, and later editions as well. I have no leftovers lately. Ma many folks are following the police investigation in this ripper business. And then yesterday, the sporting fancy was in a frenzy for any news in the cricket matches in Melbourne. Spuroff was bowling, you know. They'll have some issues at their office on Fleet Street, I'll wager. Thank you, Jonas. I'll take your advice. Um, Ian points out that... Uh, uh, the entirety of Chinatown is uh, problematic. It's like, yeah, no, it was, uh, yeah. <laughs> there are certainly parts of the game where it's like, ooh, we would have done it differently now. Um, sorry, elves, that we're teasing you by having to <laughs> you see the chat, but you can't hear what's going on. Um, yeah, you can watch the VOD later. <laughs> All right, do we have Fleet Street on the map? Let's see. Do I see anything new? I don't see anything new. Okay, let's mouse over things. Huh. Probably should have played a little further ahead than that. Um, I'm going to uh, go ahead and switch to the ever faithful clue book um and i'm gonna cheat slightly one of the advantages of having this in pdf is i can just search for keywords um uh okay. the newspaper we need is at fleet street eh? as if we don't have enough to do where are we off to then you're absolutely right Watson. we have more than enough to occupy our times perhaps we should send a messenger talk to wiggins okay uh, and this is another case of like it's not clear when you use Wiggins. If it was something like the game said, you know, hey, we don't, Holmes, we don't have time for this, or you know, Fleet Street's too far away. We, you know, some kind of indicator. I need to get a messenger. Then it'll be oh, talk to Wiggins there. But it's been kind of arbitrary when we need Wiggins and when we don't. Wiggins, I have an errand for you. At your service, Mister Holmes. Go to the Fleet Street offices of the London Times, find a copy of yesterday's paper, the early edition, mind, and bring it back here. A half a crown ought to cover your trouble. Half a crown would do just fine, sir, but Fleet Street's a long way to go for something I got right here. You see, this jacket of mine is wearing a bit thin, and the Times is just a thing to fit the lining and keep a body warm, sir. Mr. Jonas is always kind enough to spare a page or two if he has any left at the end of the day. Would it be the one you're looking for? Yes, my boy, that's just the one, and let's make it a crown, shall we? That should be enough to fetch you a new jacket. Um, so, uh, one thing I do want to talk about a little bit is, uh, uh Wiggins and Holmes' uh, empathy. Um, a lot of modern interpretations of Holmes paints him as some kind of emotionless automaton, and certainly there have been times where Watson's referred to him as such in a canon, but the reality is, is that uh, even a, a 
moderate read, not even a close read of the material. It shows that's just not true. Um, Holmes laughs frequently in the canon. I think one person tracked it like 26 times or something like that. Um, uh, certainly, uh, Holmes is very caring about Watson as well as other people. He cares about his brother. Um, he frequently doesn't take money from clients that are under, that are unprivileged. Um, in this case of Holmes giving Wiggins extra money because he's got a he needs a jacket, is perfectly in touch with Holmes as a character from the original material. Um, and while Wiggins is not nearly as prominent as later pastiches indicate. It's still the, the irregulars and the role they play in society and how Holmes treats them all still lines up very much. Now let's go back to the dormitory. Hello again. I have a copy of yesterday's Times to describe Sarah's death. I'm very sorry. Show it to me then or leave me in peace. Give? Do, 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 do. Newspaper to James Sanders. Oh, so sad. He's so sad. It, it can't be true. My, she's dead? Who Who's responsible? I'll pull his arms out. I'll... This is Mrs. Sherlock Holmes, consulting detective for Scotland Yard, and I am Dr. Watson. We are trying to find her murderer. We require your assistance. What more could you possibly want of me? I have a whole bunch of questions for you, buddy. I've been trying to get to for hours. Have you seen Miss Carraway recently? Not these past few nights. We thought the coach might be getting wise to us, so we decided to steer clear of each other for a while. She was killed late in the evening behind the Regency Theater. Do you recall where you were at the time? I was here by myself, studying for my chemistry exams, like always. Was your roommate here to vouch for you? No, he's almost never here. He's always in the lab, but you can't think I had anything to do with it. No, no. More witnesses just make the events easier to sort out. Well, he knows nothing of it, that's for sure. I kept her a secret even from him. Do you know anyone who had a quarrel with Sarah? No, I'm sure that I don't. We knew each other quite well, but out of necessity, we knew very little of each other's friends. You could ask your sister Anna, or maybe Antonio Caruso, Alma's fiance. They might be able to tell you something. Where can we find them? I've never been able to either of their flats, so I don't know their addresses. But I can tell you that Anna sings at the Chancery Opera House, and I've heard Antonio say a number of times he spends his free time at St. Bernard Schnooker Academy. Where did you meet with this couple if you've never visited either of their homes? We would often picnic together. There was a certain spot near a priory school that Anna always wanted to go. I gather she goes there frequently. She loves children and likes to watch them play. She seemed especially interested in one lad, a curious little chap, never joins in with the other boys' games, and I'd like to talk to him from time to time. Where exactly is this picnic spot? It's just west of here, where Earl's Court runs into Brompton Road. We would always picnic by the wrought iron fence behind the school. Is there anything you can tell us that you think might help us in our investigation? All I can tell you is that if you find the one who killed my Sarah, you better keep him away from me or I'll be the one who gets the rope for murder, because I swear I'll kill him. I'll kill him! I'm going to check again. What more could possibly want of me? You know, see, I'm, I'm now every character, I'm going to... Ask him again to make sure that everything I see is gray because I will not be fooled again. Um, but yeah, so uh, Antonio Caruso is a new name for us. Uh, so we have a lead for that. We have tried talking to uh, uh, the sister. Um, and we went to her room and we, we've already, I believe, thoroughly checked the theater. Uh, so we have some new locations, which I got. I see people are chatting about bloodlines in the chat. Um, uh, yeah, Ian, did you ever actually uh, play Bloodlines yesterday? You were talking about possibly doing it. I don't know if you actually ever did or not. Meanwhile, I'll go to the picnic site and playgrounds. So, um, we talked about this before about uh, uh, the blocking of the hotspots, and usually. Um, we've had the notice the top third of the screen has been empty and the middle third of the screen is where actually most of the, the hotspots or the mouse over clickable things are. In this case, we see something different here, but also because we have this visual fence, it's a little clearer. We basically visually get the top third being an interactive piece we can engage with. Um, oh, you did three hours. Cool. You got through Hollywood. Awesome. Um, so start looking around. 
Two older boys toss a battered cricket ball back and forth. It is likely that cricket bats are not allowed in school grounds. Many headmasters regard the game as common and therefore unsuitable for young charges. Common. A group of younger boys play ring around the rosy. They shout the words, ashes, ashes, all fall down, little realizing or caring about the macabre origin of their childish game. <laughs> You could look like the spinning boy. Acting from sheer youthful exuberance, or perhaps as a result of a better or dare, the boy twirls and giggles simultaneously, drunk with dizziness and breathlessness with excitement. And breathless with excitement. The boy appears to be under 10 years of age and has a small frame. He is dressed expensively, though he has treated his clothes and cap with a little more than casual neglect. Let's see if we can talk to anybody here. The little boy fell down, that's cute. I want to talk to this guy. I want to talk to anybody. I can't, I can't talk to anybody. Okay. Can I, can I go here a different way? Nope. See, that's all says anything to say. The carefree days of childhood have never appreciated the time and always missed afterwards, wouldn't you say? If every child could grow up in such comfort and security as his home, what a different world this would be. Um, uh, uh, he points out the spinning kid doesn't doesn't even have a back. He just kind of flips around, <laughs> just constant fronts. Yeah, um, yeah, he, he just doesn't really have a back of his head. It's just kind of front head. A little chip on the animation there. Do you see a detail that might make a spot especially attractive to Miss Caraway? It is a charming picnic site, peaceful, lovely to look at, and bathed by the sounds of children's laughter. I can see no other significance to this scene. How should we win the boy's confidence, Watson? I must speak to him. I'm not sp I'll not speculate about the nature of the connection to this case, but I'm certain he is important. Perhaps we should speak to Miss Caraway's gentleman friend, the snooker player. See, now that's good direction right there. Before, I was like, eh, I'm not sure where I need to go. This one's like, oh, I was like, hey, maybe we should go talk to this person instead. Great. Thank you for giving me direction. Uh, Ian's playing Tremere because of course Ian's playing Tremere. That's said as if there's any other clan Ian could possibly be playing. Snooker. Public house with a K. That's interesting. I don't know if that's an original spelling or not. Snooker. Shelves of crystal wine glasses and heavy mugs for ale and beer. Two kegs of good British beer. A cheap oil reproduction of Windsor's famous portrait of George Byron Beau Bromo, patron saint of dandies, fops, and other men of leisure who earn their living by the wits rather than by their labors. A tin of cheap lilac scented talc and a supply of chew Q chalk have been sent to the shelf for the convenience of players. Q chalk. Q chalk. Talk to the barman. Barman, do you know your clientele? Who can afford to come in here and while away the day? We cater gentlemen of leisure, sir. Men of means and great refinement who take pleasure in the joys of intelligent conversation and a game of skill. You know, like Twitch. I'm looking for a man named Caruso who frequents these premises. Do you know him? Perhaps, but names and faces are not my strong suit. If Prince Albert himself were to rise from his grave and walk through the door, I regret to say I wouldn't recognize him. My glasses and bottles require most of my attention. Give me a pint of bitter, please. Very good, sir. That was a real fast drink there, Holmes. Oak and cedar logs burn hotly. They rest in the iron rack. <laughs> Barman is Batman, huh? Yeah, it's... it's. I mean, the, the other great detective, as it were. It, it would make sense. Batman's secretly spying on Sherlock Holmes. Look, chum, you have to wait your turn like everyone else. I just want to talk to the guy. I just want to talk to the guy. 
Batman, give me a pint of bitters. <laughs> Bugger off, mate. I'm trying to concentrate. I'm looking to have a discreet word with a man named Caruso, Antonio Caruso. For a price, I can furnish some useful insight. A guinea, and I'll set you to rights. So I have some options here. Um, uh, again, this is kind of a weird design choice. Um, I don't know how much money Holmes has. He just gave Wiggins a crown for a coat. So, I mean, is there a reason why I can't give this guy more money? I don't know. You drive a hard bargain, sir. Hope your information has value. Here's a smart chap. What I know is that you should talk to Nobby, the bloke what's wearing the billy clock in his head. He's the one that'll tell you what you want to know. Right. But this guy's in the middle of a game. He just gave him some crap about being in the middle of a game. Step aside with you, man. We're going to make a living here. All right. Do you give credence, Watson, to the old adage that skill at snooker is clear evidence of a misspent youth? I've always admired the man who knows how to handle a cue, Holmes. You know my fondness for billiards. Uh, I don't know if that's canonically established. It's not inaccurate. Um, Watson certainly uh, does gamble. Um, and there's been, he was a soldier, so uh, wouldn't be this kind of rough cleans hell wouldn't be unusual for him to be around so see if the barman come out oh <laughs> so you dan says a lesser a lesser game would have had a cheap pool mini game <laughs> because two episodes ago jay was in the chat said a lesser game would have a dart mini game and then i had to play darts for 15 fucking minutes so <laughs> Uh, I hope I, I actually hope we don't have to play another billiards game. Uh, seriously, I want to talk to this guy. I have a good throw that any chap with an hour to kill could master this game. Is it true? Go ahead and try. You've got about ten pounds you're dying to lose. Take Jock on. Through the deep velvety pile this once sumptuous floor covering has been worn to a nub and its rich glowing colors have been dimmed by age at the mud from a million pairs of boots, it gives the room a small faded claim to gentility. Okay. See if there's anything in our inventory that we can use to disrupt this game. Smock, habits. Leather preparation. No, no, no. Throw a dart at him. I'm actually curious now. Use dirt. Ah, uh, see, the billiards are not interactable. Use dart and jock money. No. All right. Worth a try. Exit. Okay. So I'm going to keep talking to people until I get gray. I got gray there. Keep talking to the barman and keep drinking beer. See what happens. Another pint of bitter. I, I feel like that's just... Oops, sorry. Watson inter interrupted me for getting more beer. Give me another pint of beer, please. Excuse me, Holmes, but don't you think you should be concentrating on the case at hand? Quite right, Bill. Doctor, let's turn our attention to more important matters. Drink it on the job, Holmes. Okay. What if I poke the fireplace in some way? Like if I use the iron bar to... No, no. Use iron bar fireplace. I feel like because Nobby's right here by the fireplace and the fireplace rests on an iron rack, I feel like there might be something to do to get Nobby's attention with fire. 
A candle shines very brightly, so brightly as to indicate some kind of additive to the wax. That's interesting. Let me pick up the expensive wax candle. Nope. Can we move the expensive wax candle? Cannot be moved. Um, perfume bottle. If I use the powder in the fireplace? Nope. Uh, yeah, no. And it's the only thing is that, it, another thing, it's, uh, I've talked about this before, the game defaults to certain verbs, um, which is handy, and so you forget that it's defaulting to a verb, and so you inadvertently do the other default verb because it's not doing accurate. Professor's best. Save it. Chemical. Dark foul smelling liquid. In small doses. Adorned white pills. Uh, try moving the thing holding the fire. I don't think it's. Uh, no, I can't wait really to do that. Uh, the thing holding the fire is not itself an independent object. The fireplace as a whole is what we've got. Uh, uh, I'm actually switching over here. Um, I'm, I'm switched back to the clue book. Um, skip through all of this. I have to pay Nobby somehow. Okay, so I think it's the case where once again I, I never learn. I have to keep talking to him. I'm told that when a man named Antonio Caruso plays here, he, dem he dominates tables. Is that true? If you want to know about the man, say so. I'll tell you all I know for a price. Say a sovereign. That's a bit strong, but I'm in a hurry. Here you go. Right, you get what you pay for. Ask the chap standing by the billiard table. He can help you find Antonio. Someone's gonna buy off everyone here. Um, that uh, gentleman just told us you know the whereabouts of Antonio Caruso. I bet you paid him for that nugget. More fool you. You might as well be flush your money down the loo. We have, I've never been to Antonio's house. Now you pay us both, and what do you have to show for it? I know where Antonio lives, but I'm not gonna tell you. I don't grasp on my friends, especially the coppers and toffee-nosed gits like you. Not even for money. Money can't buy everything. We'll have to try a different tech, Watson. Just give me a minute, lamp next time, will you give? Okay, so I've got a, uh, to go through again, I think. Quite a remarkable hat you're wearing. Does it help your game? Not so as you notice if it's any of your business. What is your business anyway? So the other thing that's mildly irritating is that this walk animation is so slow, so going between these things is kind of onerous. So we keep trying, and keep getting other shops and try spectator again. Try the bartender. I suspect those two men have more than a casual familiarity with Newgate Prison. Can you tell me about them? Some of the Academy's noblemen, sir. Jock Mahoney in the yellow and Nobby Charlton in the hat. Salt of the earth they are. I allow no rough trade in my establishment. I have difficulties believing that. Perhaps Inspector Estrada should be informed. 
By all means, I have a pitiful memory for faces, but if he's a snooker player, he is welcome. Uh, Ian mentioned that um, Sierra game to speed setting helps you walk faster. Uh, don't think so. Um, no. Not that I have things or. The man in the yellow coat seems a remarkable character. Is he married? Indeed, sir, to Peg O'Shea, a real beauty around these parts, dark hair and violet eyes. The whole family's black Irish, as they say, with temperaments to match. Jock's out of the house quite a bit in account of them. See that luxurious walk animation. In case you're curious, I actually do kind of talk to myself when I'm playing games like this, so it's not atypical. Uh, try Jock one more time, then I'm going to try Watson, and figure out what's next. Nope, okay. Um, I the blue book. Uh, uh, in case anyone asks, I have zero compunctions in using uh, walkthroughs or hints, particularly these older games. Um, um, they are designed to be very um, fiddly. Uh, that's by that's intent, that's by design. Um, they're meant to give you lots of gameplay because you have to try every little thing and go through stuff. Because I'm doing these primarily to show you guys what these games are about, and also because I have a lot of Sherlock Holmes games to get through, um, I have zero problem with hitting more throughs when I'm stuck. Okay. Holmes approaches Jock and waits for the lamp is shot and inspects, ex uh, demands to speak with him immediately. I never would have got that. So I have to go by here. No, I don't want the carpet. I want to stand by Jock. So. Why aren't they playing? They're just sitting there. Um, oh yeah, Quest for Glory. I honestly need to finish those two at some point. I don't think I even have, I have the space quest comes. I don't think I even have the, uh, the Sierra one, or the quest for ones. <sighs> so no, okay, I'm gonna, I'm starting to wonder maybe if this isn't glitching. Yodian's talking about um, played the first four Quest of Glory games and kind of took a break and uh, not entirely sure why. It's like, honestly, I'm the same way. It's like, I could be really into something, but after a certain point, I just need a break um, because I start to feel the same, start getting exhausted by it. Um, there are some games like these uh, where I could actually play them pretty consistently, but there are other games where it's like, I really like it, but you know, I just need a minute. Are you guys can play now? Walked out, came back in. No. Just quickly double check. Okay, so he will eventually do it. 
So I have to wait for this guy to get off his ass. I almost won a snooker game right now. Oh, come on! I clicked on him. Oh. I have like a couple of seconds to get him. This is this is high quality streaming content right here. Watching guys knock the same ball around in a looping animation. Come on, click the hell out of ya. Come on, come on, buddy. Wait, what do you mean I own them? What what what's happening? I just did. Oh, mm. what does the internet say to do? You know, tell me. I had a feeling that uh, Ian bought me the the Quest for Glory games. Um, so thank you, Ian, if that's what you did. Um, and certainly will make Rose happy because she has also spoken very highly of the Quest for Glory games. So. Now I have very little excuse aside from the literally 600 games also I have to play. Come on. If it's a game looking for, you have to wait your turn. Come on. Talk first to spectator and pay for info. Then talk to Nobby Charleston suggested. You should talk several times. Talk to the barman. And finally talk to Jack when he would tell you about the whereabouts. Okay, so. First talk to the spectator and pay for the info. Which I've already done, but let's do it again. Then talk to Nabi, Nabi Charleston. Sorry, Jim, I can't talk right now. All right, let me try something. I know I'm not going. Thank you for you for pulling it up, by the way. So I have to. When the ball is on his side of the table, but before he's lining up his actual shot. Ugh. Have you changed your mind about speaking with me? No, I haven't, but I may change my mind about throwing you out myself. Now leave us be. Sir, I request a moment of your time now. I thought I told you. Perhaps your wife or her brother should be informed that you are keeping company with a tall, red-headed stage actress who wears poi de vive perfume. For the love of Mike, keep quiet. You've been spying on me? Not at all. The evidence is all over your person. A strand of long red hair in your jacket, a particular brand of powder on your collar, the unmistakable scent of Poire de Vie. All right, enough. Can I keep this between ourselves? Indeed. I have no wish to discompopulate your domestic arrangements. I simply must know where Antonio Caruso lives. I bear him no ill will. Antonio keeps his rooms over on Kingsway, just below the H Horborn Viaduct. Number 86 it is. Very cozy little spot. Thank you. I trust this information will prove accurate. The O'Shea sound like a contentious and vengeful lot. You don't know the half of it. Here we go. Thank you, Dom. Uh, we're all in this together. But that, then I, I think we're pretty close to the ends. Ah, Mr. Sherlock Holmes, I presume. Your likeness in Beaton's annual does you justice. Then I shall send my compliments to Mr. Charles Doyle, the artist. Uh, did Charles Doyle do the cover? That's interesting. I don't think, you know, maybe he might have for the Beatons. Um, uh, uh, the most iconic artist, actually, um, the one who actually did most of the, um, Strand Magazine illustrations is different. Um, and that's the artist that most people think of. It gave Holmes to his iconic look, uh, gave him the curly pipe, the hat. Um, that all came from a different artist, but I think Charles Doe may have actually been the artist for Beatons. So. Mr. Caruso, we are investigating the murder. Of course, we're investigating Sarah's death, tragic events. But I must tell you that I'm having trouble enough with her sister, Anna. I'm sorry for your troubles, but we're investigating a murder. Yes, that was selfish of me, but you see, I'm worried sick about Anna. I haven't seen her nor spoken with her since I read Sarah's death. You've been to Anna's home today, then? Yes, but the housekeeper wouldn't let me in. I believed the old crow when she said she hadn't even seen Anna. I left my card and came back here. I played the piano to distract myself. 
Would you be so kind as to tell us the address of Miss Carraway's current residence? It's on the good side of Bun Hill Road, number 25, just off Criswell Street. Not the best part of town, but Anna wanted a house in the grand style, and she got one. Do you have a key? No, but the housekeeper will most certainly be there. She's always there, cleaning and polishing and sweeping and generally making a nuisance of herself. I warn you, however, the woman is as deaf as a post, not loudly and long. Thank you for that advice. If you see Anna, tell her I'm nearly prostrate with worry. Sure thing, buddy. I'm sure she's totally alive. Do you mind if we look around? I do mind, but I won't stop you. I really don't see how that will help find Anna or Sarah's killer, for that matter. Well, all right, then. I'm going to look around. On both sides of an elegant oak wood fireplace hang framed portraits of some of the greatest operatic composers of the 19th century. Rossini, Wagner, Bizet, Verdi, Donizetti, and Hoffman are represented. I believe it's going to be the same thing. Yeah, these are all pictures of the same thing. A metal extension brings down this overhead lamp to illuminate a smaller area. This room may once have been an elegant study. Surface while blue delft crockery. Presumably these articles are purely decorative because there is no other evidence of cooking utensils or even a gas ring on which to boil water for tea. A conventional brass mantel clock. This one is badly tarnished, suggesting it's either old or poorly maintained. A silver-plated loving cup. An inscription rendered in a <coughs> flowery script reads, First place, St. Bernard Stucker Academy, 1887. That's interesting. <coughs> A friendly fire is currently burning in the fireplace. Aha, uh -huh, these stuffed chairs, a separate cushion. I come. This chair looks extremely comfortable, though the cloth is a bit threadbare. A large cushion rests on this chair. No, I don't want the chair, I want the cushion now. A plush velvet cushion has been casually tossed into this chair. I just try to move the cushion. Nothing of interest under the cushion. Pick up the cushion. Nothing of interest there. Okay. So just a cushion for, you know, reasons. A young woman in a bathing costume tests the water of Blackpool. She is turned towards the shore and appears to be having second thoughts. Her face bears a striking resemblance to the murder victim, Sarah Carraway. It's Miss Anna Carraway, I presume. Yes, that's Anna. Lovely, isn't she? A lovely set of blue satin curtains. These cannot be moved, but can they be opened? They cannot be opened. They're just curtains. Hooray! Hey, I'll design can hang out. An impressive collection of European literature, complete editions of Balzac, Cervantes, Flaubert, and Goethe. Yes, I don't know how to pronounce that one. Complete with space with leather-bound classics like the Iliad and Dante. Close examination of several titles reveal that they have never been opened. It's one of those library owners. Cases. Two hard shell leather cases, the type used by players of woodwind instruments. These are scuffed and scratched and appear to be less than well treated. Yet another in a long series of gas lamps. So many gas lamps. Uh, do, do, do I think we got everything. Curtains of steel. Yeah, <laughs> the curtains cannot be moved. Mr. Caruso, we've heard about your picnics near the Priory School. Can you tell us anything about the boy whom Anna showed a special interest? Not really. He's a strange lad, always standing alone watching. He... I believe she felt sorry for him, poor little rich boy and all that. The last time we were there, she said she wanted he wanted a gyroscope and that she was going to get him one. Imagine buying a gift for a child who has everything. And did she give him a gyroscope? I don't think so. Wiggins has a gyroscope. All right. So I'm going to go try to get me a gyroscope. See if Wiggins will sell it. Or if it's like, you know, reminds him of his dead father or something. I don't know. Another irritating thing. Um, the, the the pipe is so iconic for Sherlock Holmes, and yet that's logically it's the um, tobacconist. Um, so, but still, my my mind wants to go. Oh, the pipe. That's where two one B Baker Street is, but it, it's, it's not. 
minor point. Wiggins, my boy, I need to use your gyroscope for a short while. That can be arranged, Mr. Holmes, if the price is right. You're a shark, Wiggins, I've always said so, but I'd merely like to borrow it. Rent it, you mean, for money. <laughs> All right, you'll be compensated. Let's say a shilling. It's most precious to me, sir. Dr. Watson himself gave it to me last Christmas. Very well, I know and invest it. I'll buy it from you for half a crown. Sold. I hope you enjoy it as much as I have done, sir. <laughs> oh, God, I love Wiggins. Do, 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 Alright. Um, I think I'm going to have to probably use the gyroscope to get the boy's attention. And the rotating boy with no back. Use. Yoo-hoo. Hey, weird dog. Come on. Come on. Come get the gyroscope. Come on, boy. Come on. You there, boy. Might I have a word with you? I'm under instruction not to speak to strangers, sir, but I do have good manners. Good day, gentlemen. What is your name, lad? My name is Paul, sir. Nice gyro. Hello, Paul. I am Sherlock Holmes. This is Dr. Watson. What is your family name? My father was warned me never to reveal it to strangers. He's very important in the city and has quite a temper. May I see the gyro? Paul, how well did you know Anna Caroline? Very well indeed. Are you chums of hers? She was my nanny when I was little. Could I look at the gyro? Yes, I'm a creepy stranger attracting children with toys. Yes, that's, that's exactly what I'm doing here. Do you know where Anna is now? Maybe. I think I have to go now. Is that an English gyro or is it foreign? Give gyro. I purchased it. I could give it away. I own it now. Do you like gyroscopes, then? Very much. I have one of my own at home, but the father wouldn't allow me to bring it to school. Do you know how it works? It's all about inertia and centrifug cent centrifugal force and uh, whatnot. It's the motion you see. That's what makes them beautiful. Quite so, Doctor. Now, Paul, would you like to, would you like the gyroscope to keep? Yes, please. And you, in return, might help us find Miss Anna. Is it a bribe, then? Not at all, my boy. We just need to find Mr. Carraway, and you're the only person who might be able to help us. You're certain that you are our friends. We're working with Scotland Yard in a criminal investigation. We were trying to keep her from harm, but we haven't been able to find her. In that case, I'll help all I can. I wouldn't want Anna to come to harm. She has a new house in East London somewhere. Someday she's going to take me there. She sings in the opera, whatever that is. Her sister Sarah is a stage actress, and I think Anna has a boyfriend. So looks like a foreigner who wears nice clothes. That's all. I hope you find Anna. I have to go now. Yeah, this kid is obsessed with gyros. The hot new toy of 1884. Pick up the cap. 1884, actually. Um, look at the cap. Look here, Watson. This hat is worn inside and out. The hatter's label is barely discernible. With a few letters, they're still legible. I wager it reads, Eddington Equestrian. Very likely, Holmes. Eddington's is a high-toned shop for the fox hunting and riding crowd and other people with more money than cents. It's down by the embankment, not too far from Rotten Row. We have found a new location. We have to exit first. Okay. Uh, there's the Eddington's Equestrial Stop. And... There's Anna Carraway's flat. After weeks... Of playing, we have finally found her flat. Let me go there first. Gentlemen, you may review the premises at your leisure, but do not touch anything. Direct any questions or concerns to me. I'll touch what I want. I'm Sherlock Holmes. You don't know who I am. Handcrafted of rock hard hickory wood and covered with cowhide, these mallets have the American style cigar shaped, he cigar -shaped heads. The game has enjoyed upsurges of popularity amongst the upper classes, and their attendance since the 10th Hussars brought them back from Punjab in 1869. I did not know that. These framed emblems use many of the standard conventions of European heraldry. But an expert eye and can detect these particular coats of arms are the invention of some manufacturer not representative of any known heraldic tradition or family. Mm -hmm. 
These framed emblems use many of the standard conventions of European heraldry. Blah, 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 blah. Um, you're then asking why we're interested in the kids' hats. Um, we don't know the kid's last name, and we don't know why uh, Anna Caraway was so interested in him. So I'm investigating the kid to find out what the connection between Anna Caraway and the boy is. That is why we are looking into him. These highly polished brass horns are used by the master of hounds to summon dogs and men to the so-called hunt. So-called hunt. The alleged hunt. You might as well try conversing with the furniture for all the attention these two twits will pay you. Wow. The narrator is really, really feisty. A match set of riding saddles made of exquisitely tanned and highly polished Spanish leather are decorated with brass fittings. The glowing patina of the seats seems to provide an independent source of light. An antique gold loving cup of the type popular in the last century. This one is inscribed Viscount Riddles Riddlesdale III, Earl of Waverley, best master of the hunt, Dorset, 1776. Presumably his family has some relation to the shop, or perhaps the Riddlesdale clan came on hard times and sold the trophy for cash at some non-northern country jumble. A stylized hip-length jacket traditionally worn by the British upper classes while riding for hounds. Among these aristocrats, the jacket was referred to as a pink, though anyone with eyes can see can clearly think the red. Um, Elves of Zion, uh, held, oh, Harold is one of your hobbies. That's cool. I've actually never really gotten into it. I mean, I, I studied it briefly, like I studied, I mean, I read about it and got some knowledge of it, but I don't know much more other than the fact that it exists and the different quadrants and different symbols mean different things. But it's always been kind of vague, I'm vaguely curious about knowing about it. A glass-fronted wooden counter. Its spacious shelves are littered with bridle bits, spurs, and other horsey merchandise. At one end of the counter is a display of caps, scarves, and insignia intended for pupils attending England's most prestigious public schools. Alright, I think we've got everything here, so let's talk to the counterman. I found this cap, which I believe was purchased in your establishment. Perhaps you can tell me to whom you sold it so I can return it. I recognize the cap, but I can't approve of its condition. I would like to return the cap to its owner. May I have the name of the purchaser, please? No, you may not. My clients expect me to protect their privacy. They do not expect me to dis direct confidence tricksters or bounders to their home, trying to collect rewards or favors upon which they are not entitled. For all I know, you may have stolen that cap. You go too far, sir. You're insulting Sherlock Holmes, consultant to Scotland Yard. That is of no significance to me. I have a reputation to think of. Are the majority of your customers hunters or polo players? I'm sure I don't know how to answer that question could possibly concern to you. I'm sure I don't know how the answer to that question could possibly concern you. My customers are the most refined people in London. Um, let them give a business card to the counterman. No, thank you. This is maybe a place we have to come back to in a bit. Does this gentleman seem to have taken on the haughty characteristics of the clientele he serves? Indeed, though perhaps he is disagreeable by nature rather than by training. Can you think of a way to overcome this gentleman's reluctance to assist us, Watson? Given his manner, there is very little which I would scruple at. Short of threatening grievous bodily harm, I can't imagine what would pry the information out of him. All he seems to care about is the comfort of his customers and enhancing his own reputation. Brilliant, Watson. That's all I'll do. Disturb his customers and jeopardize his reputation. Let us make nuisance of ourselves. I noticed one or two items which might discompose these tranquil surroundings. Perhaps we could use them to loosen this chap's tongue without having to tear it out. Surely you, Jess Holmes. Still, I'll follow your lead. Um, I'm going to move the trophy. It can't be moved. Okay. Pick up. Uh, Joey, I think we're just here. Pick up saddles. Pick up the jacket. Talk to the customers. Pick up the horn. Um, this is established lexicon and syntax for describing a symbol that any practiced heraldic artist could recreate in their own style but still match the forms. That's interesting, actually. So it kind of has enough rules to everyone can recognize it, but enough flexibility that uh, the artists can do their own stuff. It's kind of cool. 
Um, so I'm just like, I know how to break stuff, but it is not engaged me how to actually break stuff. Uh, I don't want to look at them. Oh, oh crap. <laughs> I, I inadvertently passed by something. I suspect those customers won't be back. Now that they're gone, I feel an almost uncontrollable urge to test every pull of mount in the shop. Watson, do bring those mounts, will you? Now, sir, do you feel you could tell us the name of the camp's purchaser past your lips, or shall the doctor and I play a few chugas? This is extortion, but I shall tell you, Mr. Lord Bromwell brought you the cap for his son, Paul. Now, please leave. Thank you, my man. Have a good day. Doctor, let us not overstay our welcome. So I accidentally did that. Whoops. No idea what happens. Um, all right. So let's... Uh, Lord Bromwell. Okay. Don't think, uh, actually, hold on. Let's do a search for Bromwell. Yeah. It's funny. Like when we first got there, it's like, oh, this is a cool searchable thing. It's great, but it's actually not been useful to me really that much at all. But they tried. Boy, they tried. Or Bromwell's Mansion. Yes. Again, I think this is probably going to be a dead end for us. I'm actually surprised I guess as far as it is the other one. The Thames. The once noble red are now polluted by the impoverished effluvia of four million souls and followed by the leavings of a thousand industries and workhouses. Flows placidly by. These sentences are not hard to, or not easy to read aloud, let me tell you. A steam-driven light cargo hauler. And of course, it gives me that one, which is much easier to read. Pull the bell pull. The imposing pull looks like it just been activated the clapper of an equivalent size that the inside of the primary bell of Big Ben. Big Ben is the bell, actually. That's almost positive. That's... Uh, pick up bell pull. Use bell pull. No bell sound? Oh, come on. Trade deliveries are the rear of the entrance. We wish to see Lord Bromwell. Was his lordship expecting you? He is not. His lordship accepts no solicitations. Are you selling something? No. We found some property which belongs to his family and we wish to return it. You may give it to me. I'll see that he gets it. I'm sure you would, but I'd rather give it to him personally. Believe me, sir, his lordship is not in the habit of rewarding people for any reason whatsoever. You might save yourself any trouble by giving what you have to me. I'm afraid I must insist upon seeing Lord Bromwell. Very well. Give me your card and I'll see if he's available. What a stubborn fellow. Servants are often reflections of the people they serve, Watson. Indeed, I'm sure our own Mrs. Hudson would be pleased to hear that she may soon be matching wits with Scotland Yard and making unreasonable demands for tea and biscuits at 2 o'clock in the morning. Perhaps my point was overly general. I'm afraid his lordship isn't available. Lady Bromwell will see you. Well, all right, then. Yes, thank you, for Ian. I was right, yes. Big, Big Ben is, in fact, the bell. No, thank you. I thought so. I thought I was right. Please wait here. Her ladyship will summon you. The type of cigarette is not immediately evident, even to an expert eye. It appears to be an exotic combination of Turkish and Balkan tobacco. There's little doubt that it was custom made by a tobacconist. Pick up the cigarette butt. Oh, come on, come on, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. I feel like I could find out about that in the tobacconist. All right. Enter. Oh, just give me a minute. I'm looking at your ashtray. Christ, give me a minute. The red crystal ashtray holds some fresh ashes and a cigarette butt. The crushed butt, not to put its fine point on it, stinks the high heaven. In claiming a moral copy of the Hellenistic masterpiece, The Death of Laocoon and His Sons, the original sits in the Vatican Museum, and this is a bit smaller than that one.
follows. The Ming Dynasty produced a very small number of these enormous jars. In addition to these two, three sit in Shanghai, one in the Louvre, and one in Berlin. Their value is incalculable. All right, I got to sleep. Right, that's why the big old bells get named. That's the reason why the Liberty Bell has a name. Mr. Holmes, what may I do for you? Permit me to introduce my colleague, Dr. John Watson. Thank you for seeing us. Not at all. My husband is otherwise engaged at the moment. Pettigrew said you had something that belongs to us. I have a cap which I believe belongs to your son, Paul. If it is Paul's, I shall have to reprimand him for losing it. How have you come by it? It's rather a long story. He is a very pleasant lad. While talking to him, we learned that Miss Anna Carraway was once in your employ. Do you know where she lives? Silly and disobedient boy. Lord Bromwell would be most displeased when he were he to learn that Paul was sharing stories with total strangers. Lady Bromwell, let me assure you of our motives. The doctor and I are investigating the murder of Anna's sister, Sarah Carraway. We are hoping that you might know where Anna or any other Carraway family members might be found. I'm sure I do not. I never knew Anna to speak for any of her family. In the end, Anna became unsuitable as a house servant. We had to dismiss her. How was it you came to retain her? Who referred her to you? I have long since forgotten that, Mr. Holmes. Now, gentlemen, if there's nothing else. I don't know. Is there nothing else? Has your partner been with you long? His entire life. He has grown old in this house, like the rest of us, though I fail to see how that might concern you. Just a set of questions. If I may, Lady Bromwell, might I ask you about the source of that unusual smell? Does Lord Bromwell smoke an exotic brand of tobacco? Indeed not. I suspect my husband's guest brought some of that noxious cigarette into the house. Now, was there something else in particular you wanted? Okay, so we know that the cigarette butt belongs to somebody else besides Lord Bromwell. Talk. If it is convenient, please tell your husband that we may return to speak with him. Perhaps he knows something about Miss Carraway's people. Do not trouble yourself, gentlemen. I am sure he knows even less than I about the unhappy girl's friends and relations. That is as may be, my lady, I would still like to speak with him. Very well, I'll give, I'll give him your card. Good day. Uh, give business cards to Lady Bromwell. Okay, she already has one. Great. May I speak with your husband, Lady Bromwell? He's very busy at the moment, as am I. Good day, gentlemen. Yeah, see, I'm going to keep talking to these people until it gets gray now. That's just going to happen now. Majestic silver mirror. The antique frame dates to the product the late 1700s. Uh, Ian mentions that among the bells at Notre Dame Cathedral are uh, Anna Genevieve, Denis, Marseille, Ancien, Gabriel, Emmanuel, and Marie. That's really cool. I did not know that. And I apologize to my French. French is for a long time. A burgundy brocade sofa made in Paris during the early reckless days of Louis XVI's ill-fated reign. A 17th century French reign just continues the French imperial theme of the sumptuous decorated drawing room. A miniaturized Roman copy of the great winged victory called Nike of Samothrace which stands at the head of the great grand staircase of the Louvre Museum in Paris. You know, next time I do these, I'm going to look up words. A horrifying portrayal of Jason's final confrontation with the Medusa, the witch whose hair is made of poisonous reptiles. These mythological objects were great favorites with certain unimaginative types in the 17th century. Uh, yeah, go down point out like she's not even looking at Holmes, like, you know, the way her hair is, like, she's just staring off. In a different direction, which is a nice little touch. And this would body language sometimes is not a great thing to do at this picture, this low pixel stage. So that's a good touch. A larger than life size portrait of a noble personage dressed in the clothing typical of the time of King Charles II. It is presum presumably some honored Bromwell ancestor. I'm sorry, but Lord Bromwell is very busy and I simply cannot allow you to disturb him. But I want to go in there. Various original paintings, each a treasure of own collection. Translation, you got me. You got that. Massive solid oop, double door. All right. So I'm going to guess uh, we, we have to um, do other stuff before we come back here, which is fine. Might you got further along than I thought we were going to in this place. And. Um, the tobacco is next. Uh, Yodan makes a really good point that um, this game's a pretty high bar for next other ones' attention to detail, and it's true. This there is 
a surprisingly good amount of detail in this game, uh, both um, just general Sherlockian detail, but also just as, as a whole, the game definitely made by a group of people who clearly really loved the material and also just were trying very hard to make a really good game. So um, I will talk more about the Frogress games. Some of them later on start to get close to this level of detail too. I'm going to see if the young lad does anything. I doubt it, but for the try. He may know some of the cigarettes. He does not. All right. We're going to fuck off then. Um, uh, uh, yeah, actually, um, after this, I do want to do one more game uh, before the, the Frogwares games. Frogwares is the company that makes... has been making Sherlock Holmes video games for the past... 12, 13 ish years. Um, so, the majority. This case has got more expected turns than the Cretan Labyrinth. Cretan Labyrinth. Um, so, a lot of the games I'm going to be playing throughout this series are going to be from that company. Um, and it gives you some value in showing um, how a company evolves and iterates on a process. Um, I'm probably gonna skip around a bit because the first couple are a little uh, not great. Um, but before that, I do want to do at least um, one, maybe two, of the consulting detective games too. So um, it will be interesting. The only thing I want to do with this is I want to show, like, okay, here's a game with a ton of detail. The interface is a little wobbly, and sometimes the puzzles are a little obtuse, but it's really a game where these people loved and cared about Sherlock Holmes and tried to make a really good quality game with the materials they had in 1992. Um, will other games hold up to that? We, uh, you will find out. It's a mystery. A huge collection of leather-bound books grace a stack of polished mahogany shelves in this lifeless room. Three gilded chairs are placed in a row against the east wall. The whole effect suggests the waiting room of a man of business, a lawyer perhaps, or a chartered accountant. This appears to be no access to number 28 next door. A brick townhouse the type made popular in the last century by Horace Fisher. The massive solidity of the facade is broken by delicate leaded glass work and the iron balustrade above the entranceway. The, the columns are cut from single slabs of granite mined from the same quarry used the builders of Stonehenge. Um, I don't know if you guys are like me, but there are times where it's like, I completely recognize that word, but I probably have never actually said the word balustrade out loud. So it's like, oh yeah, I know that word, but my brain is unclear as to what's actually happening right now. A brick town house with type made popular in the last century by Horace Fisher. Oh, same thing. Yeah. Speaking of pilot drug. So, townhouses next to each other. I'm going to go 28, but there's no connection now. Beautiful design of rosewood door. Its top two panels are done in elegant leaded glass. The Italian-influenced pattern continues the theme established by the windows which surround the door. Highly polished brass bell pull, which cleverly doubles as a doorknob. Pulling the doorknob rather than turning it rings a bell, probably below stairs. Use bell pull. Now we get a bell. Why didn't we get a bell last time? I feel there's inconsistent bell use in this game. That being said, I think part of the reason why there's a bell here as opposed to that one is because we're not getting any other interface. Um, which is not great if you're not playing this with the audio on. Um, it's big for a game that has not a lot of audio cues. That's a weird place to put a game-specific audio cue. Ah, Watson, the marvels of East London, an elegant townhouse not five minutes from the Bank of England and Threadneedle Street. The city never ceases to amaze. This is what I believe the Americans call a serendipity, Holmes. That's their way of describing an unexpected pleasure. I am indeed surprised such a lovely home in Shoreditch. Shoreditch? Shoreditch? How shall we approach Miss Carraway's serving woman, Watson? If Mr. Crusoe is to believe, we may not have to deal with her at all. The door is locked. 
Well, all right. Let's go ahead and see. Um, flat, we've already done that. And a caraway sauce. All right. Oh, the key ring. Right. 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 The thing we got. The very first episode. Or close to it. From, we got it from the um, Opera House. It may have been two, but still. It's been a while. I believe the demands of good manners have been satisfied, Watson. If there's anyone inside, they're either incapacitated or they don't wish us to see wish to see us. In either case, we must enter. Indeed, let us proceed. She's deaf, so we're gonna scare the hell out of her. Watson, what do your powers of deduction tell you about this house? Is it occupied or <coughs> are we alone? I know that guessing is anathema to you, Holmes, so if you don't mind, I'll reserve my judgment to er, opinion until we have some focus. Some facts. Hang on a second. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, it is not the dry cough you think it is. Something went down the wrong way. It's fine. <clears throat> I promise I'm not dying on the camera. One of two dragon trees uh, graced the sp spacious foyer. These are particularly lush specimens, but appear to have gone without water for longer than the caring horticulturist would allow or recommend. The plant fits in a well-turned ceramic pot glazed in royal blue enamel. <clears throat> a charming photograph of two adolescent girls dressed in light-colored taffeta. They both hold sun bonnets and the sea is visible in the lower left corner of the scene. The smaller girl appears to be a much younger version of the murder victim, Sarah Carraway. Older girls, presumably Anna Carraway herself. One thing I will note, um, I don't know, the game kind of implies this, but uh, we went to Anna Carraway's flat. I went to Sarah Carraway's flat, and they look very different. Um, the, the woman who was murdered was definitely much less financially well off than this house is, so there's definitely an interesting disparity there. I don't know if the game's going to go into there or not, but that's something I've noticed. A large mauve turkey carpet, beautifully made and decorated with an interesting geometric pattern. It serves as the focal point for the living room. It pulls the whole room together. That movie's actually after this. Weird. A lavishly engraved silver plate rendered in Louis Cortez style and used it to hold a calling card to prominent visitors. Um, I'm going to try to get my card to her. Um, and so, this is a card from Sprinting on it, but cannot be read from here. Jesus Christ, pick up the bloody card. Look at the bloody card. I'm going to get the calling cards in a second here. This card presents the name and office address of a certain Jacob Farthington, barrister of Gray's Inn, London. Um, so, uh, uh, calling cards are moderately a big thing in Victorian society, particularly for professionals. Um, uh, uh, they're called... Well, there's business cards here. There are business calling cards and there are personal calling cards. Um, and basically, the, the role they have is, is very intricate. Uh, but what really it boils down to is it's a way to kind of see who's coming to visit you and give you an opportunity to blow them off. So if... I'm in my study and I'm working and uh, someone comes to visit me, they would leave a calling card. That calling card would be delivered to me and I could look at the calling card and see who's actually there. And I'd go, oh God, I don't want to deal with this guy. Um, just to tell him I'm busy. And so the, it's, a, it's a way to kind of, of, of express that, but also to, um, hey, I came to visit, um, I'll be back later. Um, it's used to, you know, for services. Uh, Business cards in particular sometimes have addresses for, for 
kind of but also remember this is before really they had phones before you had email addresses so it wasn't really used to contact you just rather let you know that they were there um and there's a uh, yeah and, and as Ian points out there's a whole language about whether the corners folded down um indicates what the person wants um sometimes there's messages written on the back um it really was a whole level of communication that we don't use anymore because we have things like uh, 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 you know, voicemail and texting and other ways that we can kind of communicate with people and have that remove. But before, you could easily call someone. You had to go to their house. Um, and so the, the, there's an entire communication system around calling cards, which is really, really interesting and fascinating. as kind of a, almost a, a proto-texting language in a lot of ways um but anyway digression uh, uh calling cards are interesting a leather-bound well-thumbed musical score and libretto of wa mozart's magic flute the parts sung a delightful character papa jenna are underlined in pencil because the sister sings in the magic flute in the opera um an impressive oak staircase, highly suitable for dramatic entrances into the living room. On descending the staircase, one looks directly into the Chinese red parlor, which is actually pink. Um, but, oh, whatever. Um, again, we talked before about uh, the detail in this game. One thing I really like is that every once in a while, you get these little animations, like when Holmes picks up the score. Um, the score is not really a key part of the game. It's just a small little bit of information, but they actually spent the time to actually make an animation for Holmes picking it up. Um, they don't have that kind of care for the spinning kid, but you know, take what you can get. Holmes himself gets a lot of attention. Which is fair. He's he's the star of the game after all. An interesting though poorly executed still life of a vase filled with flowers. Perhaps the artist suffered from cataracts, though the colors are stunningly lovely. Lovely. The subject appears blurred and the forms are not properly delineated. It is signed simply C. Monet. <laughs> That's a little uh, call out to Monet. A beautiful piece of cream colored linen is stretched and set in a handsome though plain oak frame. The domestic homily blessed this home and embroidered it in small gray letters. All right. Can we go upstairs? Oops. Hold on. Okay. Scared the hell of this one. Ah, the housekeeper. Good day, madam. Hmm, no response. Crows don't exaggerate the woman's condition, Lutton. She seems to be extraordinarily hard of hearing. We must speak to her immediately if I don't want to frighten her. Um, I'm gonna take a moment to actually save this, because I have a feeling this is gonna be funny. Oh my, don't start on me so young, ma'am. Who are you doing here anyway? Are you a friend of Ms. Anna's? Excuse us, madam. We're looking for Miss Carraway. You haven't brought any dirt in your shoes, have you? I trust not. Pardon our intrusion. We should speak to Miss Carraway. Don't whisper, young man. How'd you get in here anyway? We have a key from Miss Carraway. We're looking for her, actually. You're not the only ones. Her fancy man was here earlier, interrupting me, keeping me from my cleaning. Like I told him, I haven't seen her all day. You can wait for her downstairs if you must. I have my cleaning to do. Maybe we have a look around this room. Certainly not, Miss Carraway barely allows me in here. I clean as best I can, but she has strict rules. I have orders to never ever touch that statue, for instance. Not that I want to mind. That shameless woman has no clothes on. Now go downstairs, please. Um I have to say I was a little worried about this uh section. Um traditionally characters who are deaf or have hearing loss are played for comedic value. Um basically their role is to humorously misunderstand what is being said um and it is a trope it is a classic trope it is a classic trope i dislike um is what i call the mr magoo trope um because it's a lot of mr magoo's shtick his entire comedic gimmick is he can't see things and he misunderstands things um this is actually handled quite well uh she's she's hard of hearing she, we did, she couldn't hear when we knocked on the door and we rang her about because God knows I have trouble hearing the doorbell at times. Um, and then, uh, you know, it, it just said, you know, hey, she had trouble hearing you. She claimed you were whispering, but it wasn't. 
It wasn't played for comedic value. It was just a relatively straightforward conversation with someone who has hearing loss. Um, so, you know, not bad, actually. I, I, I wish people did more cool things with people with hearing loss, but that was not handled, that was handled okay. A brightly colored ceramic bowl filled with Spanish oranges. Their delightful aroma competes with the smell of cleaning carbolic and furniture polish and oozes. Look at the statue that we can't touch. Can't touch it. Hey, El Design is audio again. A miniaturized version of the incomparable Venus de Milo. In this marble rendering, the lovely lady's arms have been restored. She stands on the polished granite pedestal on top of which lays a thin layer of dust. Taylor, please leave us things alone. You and your companion are disturbing my house cleaning. I would be grateful if you would leave us room. Well, yeah, before you ever look around. All these scene rendered in the naturalist style of Mountain Valley near Salzburg, Austria. Again, I'm going to talk about this again. I know I've talked about this uh, uh, beginning, but I do want to kind of talk about this again a little bit. Um, uh, we have a situation where the character here is clearly telling us, please leave. Um, don't do anything. Please get out. Get out immediately. Gameplay thus far has told us that this is absolutely the thing we should not do. We should click on everything. And the woman's not actually stopping us. Um, there's no indication. There's no timer. I could stand here and look at the room all day. Um, nothing's actually, unless I, there's a chance I may click on something that may force her to kick us out in the animation place. That, that may happen. But in general, the game and what the characters are telling me is not syncing up both with what's happening in the game and also what the game actually wants us to do. Um... I've been harsh on this before, but I will say that at times this isn't necessarily bad. The disconnect can be valuable. In this case, it's a case of the character wants us to leave, but we're not going to leave. The problem is, is that the character is not responding to our refusal to follow that. Um, there's a better case of it in the, the billiard hall, actually, when it was like you, the guy didn't want to be bothered, so we kept pestering and pestering and we found the right moment to pester him. Um, while well, that was a awkward situation communicated a bit poorly um at least it was the game was responding and the character responding in a way that that were all synchronized um this is divergence um and this is where sometimes you get into um if you're following the story of the game if you're role-playing for lack of a better term um you're like, oh well she tells us to leave we should go leave and you're actually going to miss a chunk of the game and possibly not progress I tend to fall into that category. I tend to go, if the game is telling me to go a certain way, I'm going to go a certain way. Um, it's one of the reasons I don't like open world games, um, where other kinds of players who will be extremely contrary and say, well, I'm going to do what I want, blah, blah, blah. And I'm, I'm sort of forcing myself to play in that style because that's what this game is requiring of me. Um, but it took time to kind of figure that out. So, I mean, it's, it's something is is design choice, I guess. Um, but this is, again, 1982, so I think they're still trying to figure out how to get the visuals and the flavor and the gameplay to all kind of match up. And this does, like I said, mostly really good. So these little moments like this are, are more jarring to me because they are so distinct. Uh, as Zion points out, yeah, good open world will allow for both. Um, and a lot of times, things that I don't consider open world actually are open world. Um, but I just tend to follow. Actually, Bloodlines, go back to Bloodlines, is fairly open world. Um, you could do a lot without necessarily following the initial plot. Um, and there's huge digression, behindering digressions you can go on to if you want to. But the game also very clearly signposts we should be going here, we should be going here, we should be going here. Um, so, anyway. A silver plated Swiss music box designed to look like a carousel. The top of the carousel appears to be removable. I'm opening that. I am opening the fuck out of that. Please leave us things alone. Your companion is my crest cleaning. Let me go through this room. Okay, so we got to get her out of this room. Thank you. Enormous bowl filled with winter apples. The fruit is well past its prime. It may be merely decorative. Dr. Watson might observe that Miss Caraway does not evidently subscribe to a adage an apple a day, etc. Three brands of distinguished and expensive French eau de cologne sit on the bench in the foot of the bed. Okay, Watson, can you give me an idea? I her. It's a very lovely room, isn't that, Watson? Do you see anything of interest? Only Miss Car Caraway's housekeeper, the woman, applies the concentration of a diamond cutter to the job that a child can do. People are strange, Holmes. 
So people are strange, Watson. That is true. That is really true. Um, move bowl of fruits. Move statue. Sorry. Move that bowl of fruits. Yeah, nothing happening here. Open that. Nope. Talk to her again. Nope. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, done. If you got a better hint, on the, uh, I'll take it. Um, and while I'm waiting for y'all to catch up, uh, Ian points out that uh, Bloodlines doesn't have a mini map or a compass to highlight its destination. NPCs would say, go to the bar by the underpass. You have to go find it yourself. So looking for a glowing marker on screen. And I think it's both good and bad. Um, I think one more thing I will say for both lines in their defense is that it is hard to miss maps in that game. Maps are everywhere in that game. Um, so, I mean, if you do say handing to find a bar, blah, there's no mini map, but also the bus stops all have maps and, and the like. So, I mean, you can orient yourself very easily in Bloodlines. So, it does give you a sense of you're finding your way in a new city. Um, so, I will give it that. Um, but certainly there are some games that try to accomplish that and don't quite succeed. It just ends up being frustrating and confusing. Uh, Yudan says that she's being distracted, but it doesn't happen in this room, which is fair enough. Um, given her, th they broadcast her hearing loss so much, it seems weird that it's not going to happen in this room. But we'll try something. Let's try shoving some shit over. We're going to be cat-like about this. Yep. Oh. Okay. Use soil. Trying to walk through it. Okay, no, no, no never mind. No, I just want to go up there. I don't, I don't want to look at the bloody staircase. I just want to go there. <sighs> yes, I know it's an impressive staircase. Excuse me, madam. I'm afraid we knocked over a plant downstairs. What? Dirt in the floor? Out of my way, young man. Okay. I was thinking of audio cues again, so that was my fault. I, I everyone gets wound up in their own perspective, so thanks, you yeah, know, that was actually a good hint. Um, I should have followed up on the tractor, tractor. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Move. Statue. Book. Small other bound volume sits inside the indentation carved in a pedestal. Pick up the book. Look at the book. It appears to be Anna Carraway's diary. Her private thoughts, feelings, and movements are recorded in this neat rectangular hand. The most recent entry is lengthy. In brief, it reveals that on learning of her sister's death, she hired some detectives, experts in the recovery of stolen property. She believed her sister's jewelry would be pawned by the killer. The jewelry itself was not particularly valuable, but a letter, quote, whose value was beyond description, unquote, was concealed in the pendant. The entry ends with the chilling sentence, quote, If they are not successful in recovering the pendant, I will be alone in the world. My poor sister dead and my child lost to me for Ever. Well then, that just got interesting. Um, let's see if there's anything else over here. I should probably uh, put that back. Nah, fuck it. She'll figure it out. Let's open that music box. Top of the music box is hinged, allowing access to the winding mechanisms. Uh, music box? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think there's a small key. Oh, 
Oh, no, 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 no. That was, that was, that was the brass key that was used to open the other thing. Uh, Close. Ah, drawer. Aha, aha. Again, super tiny pixel. Drawer there. It plays a tune. A small built-in tray holds the key to the music box and two pairs of earrings. Neither pair appears particularly valuable. Pick up. Wanna uh, look at the drawer. Right? Okay. I wanna pick up the drawer. Yeah, money being uh, the child being Paul. I'm thinking the same thing actually. And so I'm thinking. Okay, let's try closing the music box. Right. Okay. Now can I pick up the fucking earrings? Use the drawer. Close the drawer. Put in a drawer. All right. Uh, all right, whatever. We'll see if that needs anything. Okay. Um. Okay, I can't talk to the housekeeper anymore. All right. Let's see what we got now. Let's go back to the map. Okay, so the public house, uh, St. Bernard's really just got us to it's a new Caruso. So let's go back there, see if he does anything with the kid. Or the jewelry for that matter. Oh, it's you, I'm sorry, I have nothing more to say. <laughs> okay, well, guess that's true, I have nothing more to say. Uh, morgue. Come a garden. Did we get a law office? I don't think we did, did we? Good day, gentlemen. Forgive me for not rising. Please amuse yourselves while I complete this correspondence. There are one or two artifacts here that might capture your attention. A sheepskin document written in Latin which states that the Magister of Michi, Master and Friends of Bidari College, Oxford, a word of the baccalaureate's degree of Jacobus Maximus Farthington. Wow, I never want to say that sentence ever again. A spherical map of the Earth is a 19th century reproduction of Leonardo da Vinci's classic globe, which the master built in 1515, shortly after the discovery of the Americas. Close examination reveals two sets of small brass hinges among the equator. Open the globe. Oh my god, it's a bar! Look at the bar! The two hemispheres separate along the equator to reveal a well-stocked spirit tarantulas, two kinds of sherry, a collection of glasses, and an antique bottle of very fine port. Pick up the bar! Use the bar! You can't handle the bar, I think. I just... I think I'm just... There'd be silly. This is an accurate model. It's only a model. 
A barrister's robe and periwig are carelessly strewn on the rack. Both items are extremely poor condition. A small quantity of surface dust suggests that neither has been recently moved, let alone worn. The rack itself is meant to look like it was carved from a single gigantic elephant tusk, but is in fact made of plaster of Paris. I'm not a flat earther, I'm a bar earther. <laughs> Titles pertain to the development of common law and randomly interspersed amongst the proceedings of the courts of chancery. Particular du jour interest gents and the handsome octavo set of the Justinian Code are represented. The majority of the library, however, consists of cheap French novels and bound live volumes of the Police Gazette and Illustrated Weekly. This low vantage point does not offer an adequate view of the bust to identify it with certainty. Well, then, I think we're just going to have to move some shit around, aren't we? Can't move the stairs? What? Use the stairs? Oh, come on. All right. A piece of cheap foolscap paper has been carefully preserved under glass and surrounded with the functional frame. A short cryptic note is written on it. It reads, Jacob, I found some. C. It is dated 12 December 1886 and posted from Whitworth in the Transvaal. The artful manufacturer intended for this gray ceramic cylinder appeared to be fashioned. Okay. The artful manufacturer intended that this great ceramic cylinder appear to be fashioned from the foot of an African elephant. The beast's toenails have been painted pink. Perhaps it's meant to be a coal shuttle rather than a dustbin. Since both coal dust and paper refuse are completely absent, it is not possible to determine which. This handsome marble fireplace and mento is uncharacteristically devoid of decorative ornaments. Despite the inclement weather and the sign time of year, the fire has not been lit. There is no sign of coal nor fireplace implements. The grill is clean. The log that sits in the grill is made of paper mache. Rendered in the richly decorative French Rocco style of the previous century, this three candle arrangement presumably provides all the light bearers to Farlington requires when the sun goes down. A gold foil box in the style popular during the reign of Louis XVI. The close examination of the painted and glazed enamel on the cover reveals, however, that it is a copy no more than 20 years old. Pick up a stuff box. I have a stuff box. I don't know why. Maybe I'll start some stuff later. We talked about Holmes drug use last time, I'm pretty sure. Um, a rickety oak veneer carenza of modern manufacturer serves as the barrister's desk. It seems poorly suited for the purpose. Farthington's jumble of papers, briefs, and letters are scattered about its surface, and its reasonably hefty volume would cause it to collapse. Okay, we did. Cool. Um, short version, his drug use was not atypical for the time. It was the fact that Watson was concerned about it was more from a medical perspective than from a societal perspective. So he was not seen as a drug addict. Mr. Farlington, what is your interest in Miss Anna Carraway? If you'll excuse me for saying so, your manner is too blunt by half. In you come without so much as an instruction to begin interrogating me. No, sir, we shall not be able to deal on those terms. You can presumably find your own way out. <clears throat> well, then, fine. Someday I will use these business cards. I don't know. I don't need to look at them. I know what my business cards look like. I'm going to use the business cards. Forgive me, my name is Holmes, and this is Dr. Watson. We're investigating the murder of Sarah Carraway. At Anna Carraway's home, we found your calling card. Have you seen her? With the exception of the one time last week, no, since uh, she was in nappies. I beg your pardon. My new status of your inquiries. We have some suggestive leads, though the murderer is still at large. We're now concerned with the whereabouts of Ms. Anna Carraway. No one has seen her for more than 24 hours. Would you please describe your interest in Ms. Carraway? At the risk of betraying the confidence of a client, I'll tell you a story that will, I trust, make my interest clear. When the Carraway sisters were just infants, their father and I were great friends. We had come down from Oxford together, looking for adventure and ways to make our daily bread. After five years of serious application, we had found neither. It took notion to dig for diamonds in Africa. Carraway, whose wife had died in childbirth, was determined to accompany me. He gave his daughters over to the keeping of a maiden sister, and off we went. Once there, it took barely six months and a bout of malaria to convince me that the rigors of life on the veldt were more than my standards of comfort would accommodate. I booked a passage home. With luck, I was able to establish this law practice such as it is. Carraway stayed on thinking his fortune was just around the corner. It wasn't, of course. He died but until years later. Over the years, the Carraway sisters remembered me with holiday greetings and such, but I never saw either of them until Anna called me in last week in my professional capacity. In brief, she retained me to research the legal procedures and evidence required to 
Fred a claim of parentage. Though she was reluctant to provide any details, this much emerged 10 years ago, and a bore a son of wedlock whom she was coerced into giving up the boy's father, Lord Brumwell. Recently, she acquired some evidence that she believed would, in the hands of the proper authorities, legally reunite her with her son. She understood that she would certainly risk old Bromwell's ill will were she to expose his evidence, but she discounted the risk. We left promising to come again two days later, but she never came. I called at her home to offer my condolences for the death of her sister, and she was mysteriously absent. I frankly wonder, gentlemen, if she under understood the position. I feared her disappearance may have a sinister cause, and you've said nothing to allay my fear. <clears throat> oh, indeed. You imagine, then, sir, that Anna's disappearance followed Sarah's death in more than a wretched coincidence. I may save, gentlemen, nothing more. It would be decomplicate matters to an extraordinary degree. Your reputation is known to me, Mr. Holmes. Might I incur engage your services to assist me in finding Anna Carraway? When you have unraveled this tangled skein, bring Anna to me, and we shall both have reason to be grateful. I'll try to understand what unfolds and do as my judgment bids. I hope that our interest in this perplexing case coincide. I am confident that our goals are the same. For now, our business is concluded. If my office holds no more interest for you, please see yourselves out. Do you have anything more to tell us, sir? Regrettably, no. When you have unraveled this tangled skein, bring Anna to me. We shall both have reason to be grateful. Very almost all right, and I will do my best. But now that our business is concluded, if my office holds no interest to you, please see yourselves out. Um, interesting little bit there is... Um, uh, the barrister said, I would like to retain you for your services. And Holmes is like, if our interests coincide, that would be great. Um, it goes back to a point I made earlier that Holmes definitely had his own uh, ideas of what was okay and not okay. He had some sense of justice. Um, and so he here is being very careful and very accurately stating that you know, I'm not going to promise you because for all I know, the situation might be really bad for her. Um, so I'm going to make my own judgments and hopefully my judgment and what you want out of this are going to coexist. Yeah, I can't talk because I'm a private client, but here's a major secret that should be saying. Uh, Confidence you forbids me from saying blah, all this stuff. Uh, that was a, a bit much. <clears throat> okay. Um... Where to now? Let's go back to... Let's just go back to the playground first. Let's talk to the boy. And then we're going to go to the mansion. And see if we can't force a confrontation. Come on, Paul. Paul is lost in thought and pays a little heed to anyone around him. Clearly, he is enamored with the gyroscope. So, we shall move on. Do, do. I would like to use the bell pull. His lordship is still in his We speak to Lady Bromwell. Yes, thank you. If you give me your card, Mr. Holmes, I'll find a relationship and see you. Again, cards. Very important. His behavior seems to improve upon acquaintance. <laughs> From we'll see you now. Please enter. Another thing I'm liking about this interpretation is that Watson also... Please wait here. Relationship will summon you. Watson was also very sharp and pointed in his humor in his own way. Um, so I'm glad to see that that's actually being reflected here in this version. Come on, I want to pick up a cigarette butt. Uh, fine. I'm just going to go in the room. Leave problem well. Oh, I can't go in there. I wait for her. And her? Mr. Holmes, what may I do for you? Speak to your husband, very busy at the moment, blah, blah, blah. I'm curious. How stupid is this? Give diary to Lady Bromwell. No, thank you. Okay. This box contains an uncommon assortment of gumdrops, poor sound lozenges, peppermint and treacle buttons, and nibs of licorice. Oh, the stuff box has candy. That might actually be useful. Uh. 
give calling card to the wrong one. Oh, thank you. Seriously, I'm trying to confront a confrontation with your husband here. Uh, okay, fine. Then maybe I don't want to be here yet. Let's run around a bit. Um, and this is something else. Uh, uh, late stage classic adventure games. Um, yeah, I'm always for, for hints. Thanks, you, Dan. Um, but uh, definitely, in, again, in a modern adventure game, um, areas that are no longer useful to you will get shut off. You just can't access them or make it super clear. There's nothing here to be grayed out, you know, what have you. Um, and this one, everything is still kind of available. So, um, okay, I do need to mention. All right. Um, uh, it, 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 I mean, like I said, if I was, my instincts were right, it's ready to be here, but only because I'm kind of following the story. Otherwise, it could be the, look, which one of these 18 places do we need to go to? So before I go in the mansion, look at my inventory here again. Pills. I feel like I need to do something while she's before she shows up. I'm not sure what that is yet. Okay. Well. Because, I mean, just from a, a, a game design standpoint, having a big room between you and Lady Gar Bromwell is uh, something that needs to happen there. Like, in this case, I don't have an option to do anything, so this is just flavor. But then we have this whole moment where she's not in the room. So... Let's try. Can I hide? What do you make of a distinctive odor, Watson? It smells like a mixture of Turkish tobacco and horse manure. I'm surprised the brothers and tried to ventilate the manor. This seems a promising development, isn't that, Watson? If the butler's manor is any indication of what we might expect to learn here, Walms, I beg to differ with your assessment. Have the decorations in this foyer in any way altered your impression of Bromwell's tastes? Not in the slightest, Holmes. The idea of having a scale model of Lacan is one's perceptual entryway is pretentious and proud in the extreme. See, the problem is like, yeah, yeah, you say warmer, <laughs> but also like there's a delay. So whatever I was warmer was like five minutes ago. <laughs> so I appreciate the effort, but it's actually not helpful. Um, uh, open the desk. Yeah, I feel like it's got to be in this room somewhere. 
Yeah, yeah, thanks, Ian. Click there! No, there! Face. Hey, GDB, whatever, okay. Let me try something. Lady of the Manor carries herself stiffly. Her eyes appear troubled, though the rest of her bearings are under control. Looks at the mirror. I will point out again that, um, except for that walking through animation, Holmes and Watson are conveniently placed that you can't see them in the mirror, except for that walking across. Watson, any new revelation struck you? It might help us in this affair? Not yet, Holmes. I'll keep wits about me. Test, 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 statue, marble doorway. I don't think I looked at that one yet. Marble doorway carved in the style of ancient Greece. Man, these guys have tacky, tacky tastes. Reclining woman, scantily dressed, leans in the woods surrounded by various seemingly friendly animals. She may represent the Roman deity Diana, the huntress, but there's no sign of her traditional bow or arrows. A gold crystal chandelier. Music from a tinkling crystal periodically fills the room. Okay. Um, I'm going to do one more thing here. I'm actually going to switch over to the book. Dr. Smithson's letter. Uh, yeah, I don't think I have a Dr. Smithson's letter. Okay. Um, so missing a piece here. Uh, but that's fine. No, we've gotten a lot further along uh, than we did last time, which is good. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more uh, kind of powering through the clue book, as it were. We're going to get about two hours anyway, so it's about time to kind of wrap things up. So, um, like I said, we've gotten pretty far today. Uh, uh, we've got to see some minor points of playing. Um, again, we're, we're, we're late stage adventure game now, so it's going to be... Tons of inventory, tons of clues, tons of locations, tons of people to talk to. And this was kind of the design, was that you meant to get, okay, let's go talk to this person, talk to this person again, talk to this person again, and kind of just go through everything over and over again. Um, if I were playing this for pleasure, maybe I would be happy to sit down and spend a lot of time with, but I mean, I don't want to make you guys walk through me clicking through every single location over and over again. You've seen enough of that already. Um, so I'm going to uh, do some more... Um, uh, Richie, oh, hey, Infinite G, um, no worries, um, you're doing tabletop, bringing hangouts, hey, tabletop's great, too, um, so, uh, I, I'm, so far, it looks like I'm gonna stay with doing these for, uh, Thursdays for a while, so, I mean, if you just, you know, plan around that, or catch it on VOD, no big deal, um, uh, but, uh, yeah, no, I mean, we got pretty far today, uh, um, I think it's pretty good, um, uh, what I was talking about before, I, I didn't finish my thought, um, I think after I finish this one, um, I'm probably going to do one or two, maybe all three cases of Consultant Detective. Um, Consultant Detective is the board game um, version of Sherlock Holmes. One of the board game versions of Sherlock Holmes. There's lots of them, actually. Um, but there were some full motion video versions done in the 90s on CD-ROM. Um, recently, in like two years ago, uh, someone remastered them to play on modern systems. And they are very 90s. Um, so this is 1982. Those would be kind of mid to late 90s. I think it's 96, 97 FMV. Um, that's a very different experience. But also those are fun because um, as opposed to like this, which is a big, long, sprawling case, because um, all the things supposed to be a thing you play in about two, three hours. So you could probably knock out a whole case in a session or maybe two. I'm going to try to do it in one because the way the game plays, it's going to be hard to break it up. Um, so... We have that to look forward to after we finish the game. So I'm thinking this looks like probably another 
a, a game or two of this than a game or two of Crystal Detective. So we got another you know a few weeks to plan ahead of us. So uh, thank you guys for hanging out as always, and I will see you next time.